Friday the 13th Part 6 Jason Liz is clearly the fan favorite and regarded as one of the best ones and I can agree with that I can see it not only is it self aware but it didn't take itself seriously anymore the first five a little bit of the fourth one but it, the first five films took itself so goddamn seriously and it's like you know maybe relax a bit maybe chill maybe have some fun and the fourth one they had some fun but this one is a lot of fun for the most part it is so much fun rewatching this movie it's so fun almost all of the kills are really good or really funny either good or just like funny honestly and they did everything right this is the perfect sort of formula for a jason slash fire 13 film so this is the one i think the first and only film okay this is the first and only film to feature absolutely no nudity which is interesting because the fourth one and the fifth one had a lot of nudity and so in all honesty i would take really good kills over nudity that's just up to me though if there's nudity sure but give me some goddamn good kills come on man and you know i got that so director tom leglaughlin took home some props from the film including jason's tombstone which sits outside his house making it look like jason is buried in his yard and his casket shit which sits in his garage dvd box includes a scene in which he shows off these props at his home and tells how a city employee refused to enter his yard to read the meter because he thought a body was really buried there that's funny neighbors and people freak the fuck out or that like the mailman just being like you got a dead body in there or something found it to be hilarious years after the release of this film kevin williamson told director that this film had a huge influence on him growing up and helped him inspire him to write the blockbuster slasher hits scream yeah i guess scream in this movie feels feels like the same it's both films feel self-aware of its genre and its placement in the genre and there's like you know bringing for a while more. like there's a moment in this film where the the grave guy the old guy i forgot his name the caretaker i think he like looks in a camera and says some people have a messed up idea of what entertainment is that broke the fourth wall that was hilarious because some people do including me have a pretty messed up idea of what entertainment is and i said that was hilarious so there are those moments that feels like scream pre-scream basically so the reason as to why John Shepard was a born again Christian, so they did not want to press his role. So they went to Tom Matthews instead, it was, as, which is the reason why he didn't come back, which is interesting. Born again Christian. I didn't know this. A crew member, Danny Bradley, played Jason on the first day of shooting, which is why Jason's build and the paintball scenes were different. This is why Jason's eye color changes during the film. Perma had seen the first day's rush and asked that Jason be recast, feeling that Bradley looked too bulky for the role. Therefore, Graham was given the part. Yeah, that was. I didn't notice that. I, mean, I noticed his skinny ass legs in the woods when he's killing those um paintball killers um, paintball people his looks does seem a bit i don't know i noticed it's like oh he's kind of skinny whatever and yes tommy jarvis is the only reoccurring protagonist in the series played by different three different actors and he's the only one honestly alice is kind of with two but when people think of a main protagonist a main hero it's tommy jarvis not only played cory from the beginning but he's a badass in the middle and in this one he's crazy but smart right he just wants to kill jason right the film made over 19.4 million dollars with a budget of three million Morgan the first time that a friday the 13th installment did not cross over 20 million and beginning the general decline of the box office returns that sucks this movie this movie did deserve over at least 20 to 30 million but by this point in 1986 or 7 the movie came out people were tired you know there's been five films fifth one less than people down why would they have any reason to go watch this one even though it's really good you know it leaves you with a great time but it just sucks they didn't make that much money okay here we go the original script contained material that alluded to jason's father which to date remains the closest to the series ever could be shedding some light on the mysterious character. In the script, Pamela's headstone is next to Jason's, a reference to the fact that someone paid to have Jason buried, explaining why he was not cremated as the mayor said in the fifth movie. As well as this, there's a there's a final scene in which Jason's father visits his son's grave, seemingly aware of the fact that his Jason is not inside it. These scenes were never filmed, but made it into the film's novels and comics. The 2009 Deluxe Edition DVD used the storyboard art and voiceover to work to complete the scene. So yeah, it would have been interesting, the mother thing, you know, it's always been it, but the father, I mean, it would shed some light on the you know his backstory but people want to see that honestly th do i want to see that no if it is there sure but i think hardcore friday fan really wouldn't want that maybe that's just me but i would not want to see that timeline wise this film takes place a year later in 1990 the timeline is not difficult to understand but it is kind of like again they don't give you an, an exact sort of timeline and date as to you know where these movies take place basically or maybe they do maybe i'm just an idiot who d doesn't pay attention clearly do in the first movie but it feels like in the later movies I just kind of fuck it. People are gonna watch these anyway. Just put out a date somewhere. So apparently, the final scene to be shot was the crash in the RV. Director Tom was terrified during the film as there could only be one take, and the crash made the scene incredibly dangerous for CG Graham. Although it remains unclear why Graham would be in the van when it flips over, as the scared is not seen until after it flips and comes to stop. So that scene where the van flips over and he Jason standing on top of him. <laughs> Thank you.
fit was a cool shot with a bunch of fire that was an amazing shot and apparently was the last shot to be seen because it probably would have required a lot of prep and stuff also speaking of cars there's even like a random car chase scene in this movie like this movie pulls all the stop jokes bringing our fourth wall good kills funny kills like like a car chasing there's even like a love story going on like they pulled everything for this movie and it's kind of it's kind of let's do everything you know oh yeah the, the opening title sequences a nod obviously to the james bond 007 that was cool to see too again they're super self-aware they're just kind of like parodying some other things with the 007 james bond opening that was i'm seeing it like oh shit this is, this is fucking awesome apparently at 86 minutes this is the shortest friday the 13th movie it really doesn't feel like that five in the first one arguably feel way slower or, sh or longer damn 86 minutes that jesus christ this like material for so little material for the first couple and like later films how is this the shortest it's crazy to me honestly so director chose to go with the old frankenstein monster beats lightning route as a way to bring back jason from the dead yes that lightning rod lightning thing bringing him back with all the worms and maggots on his skin and open his eyes that shit was awesome what a way to bring back a dead character was awesome. This is the first film in the series in which all teenage roles are played by young adults. None of the actors were being teenagers in real life for protection. I mean, I thought that was the case for all the movies where none of them were actually teenagers. They were like in their 20s to sometimes even 30s. Honestly, some of these actors in these movies that are so-called teenagers, they look at them adults. <laughs> they didn't look like they were in their 20s or teenage years, but whatever. So the cheek James Bond nod was meant to set the tone for the film. <laughs> It was something that was gonna be not just another Jason movie, but kind of a homage to other slasher films, as well as kind of a, a satirization of them and at the same time. So yeah, that set the tone. I mean, I, I never thought of it as that. That was just a cool homage, but I believe that was just to set the tone, be like, okay, we're gonna relax. There isn't gonna be a lot of good kills, funny kills, and just relax and chill, people. Like, I did not know that. Reggie and Pam from the previous movies were supposed to return. However, Shavar Ross backed down after finding out that Reggie was going to be killed off for real. Who the hell is Reggie and Pam? Is that the uh, oh god i probably want to edit this i'll put it in photos but i'm completely blanking right now oh god just move on i just forget that i said that whatever i'm not gonna pretend to know who they are the director pointed out to what fans already knew that he just never thought the idea that you have sex and that you die would be interesting or whatever happened so he just never included nudity as to why there's no like sex scene or nudity in this movie tom matthews plays tommy is equally well known to genre fans as freddy from return of the dead i feel i have yet to seen i need to watch the zombie genre isn't really my thing but if he's in that, sure, I'll watch it. I just, there's a lot of things I need to watch. Heard to say that he tried to bring some laughs to the film through clever dialogue whenever possible. The bottom line for me is that these things have to be entertaining. And it clearly was as to why, you know, I really like this one and some people really love it. Oh, I didn't know this. Alice Cooper co-wrote and performed the film's theme song. He's back, the man behind the mask. I guess, so this is one thing that I kind of don't realize is that a lot of well-known, like, musicians were, like, write and perform themes for some of these, um, movies. And that rarely happens. I mean, the weekend did black panther the disney songs are you know that's obviously gonna happen but i don't know i'm starting to see less and less of that nowadays with movies i don't know it just doesn't happen for some reason obviously you know they're busy as well these famous musicians but yeah i just don't see that anymore for some reason so the sequence featuring this the caretaker's demise along with the couple was a reshot after the film had already completed it was added because one of the producers requested more kills there are kills that are just kind of there which you know they're good but it's like okay why are we doing this okay just more kills why not this film's already good why the hell not so i get it there's a shot of the three heads falling to the ground after the triple decapitation but the director cut it himself they didn't think that it looked good yeah there's one thing that was that's probably one of the few deaths and kills that were kind of butchered the three well there's the two guys who's butter that they got beat by the girl in the paintball game and jason comes up and just kills all three of them and that was like oh what was that come on you know i think that was the only one might be missing another one but that was the only one and one thing i will mention before i get into the actual film is there are actual kids like in the camp there's these like camp crystal legs and camp counselors and we've never seen like actual little kids in any of these films however in this one this is the first and i think only i might be i'm not may not be remembering other ones but probably the first and only movie to include kids in an actual like cabin kind of obvious but apparently they're like oh yeah we should all have kids in this movie and there they are they're just there being kids let's get on with the movie you got tommy and his crazy ass friend getting out of the crazy war thing they go tommy wants to confirm that jason is dead he wants to make sure that he is dead 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 however new 
Naruto purposely or accidentally brings back Jason with a lightning rod. Opens up, kill his crazy friend with like a Kano heart punch. Fucking squeezes that shit. He gets it. He turns around with the mask. 007. That was awesome. First of all, the first kill just like opens up Kano punches with a heart thing. That was awesome. The police, they don't believe him because he's you know, well known as a crazy guy. However, there is this like subplot of the sheriff's daughter being into, what is it, Tommy? Because she's into like the bad guys, the bad boys. That was just kind of there. It was like, okay, this is just kind of there. Why the hell not? Add on a little love story BS there. She's just into, you know, not crazy guys. I mean, I guess crazy guys, but just the bad boy, you know? Well, that's how we have these somewhat useless like paintball scenes. I, I will admit they are useless. There's had then more kills, but the kills are, are good. Especially this one kill where he brings this one who's like chopping like off woods. He like breaks his arm and looks at it like, like a little like comedic way. Hilarious. He throws one guy to a tree trunk and there's a happy face there. Really funny kill. Officers get, you know, Tommy a chance to get out. He try to go back to the grave. He gets jailed again. He gets in like twice. He gets cuffed and jailed in fucking twice, by the way. Before the RV ticks over and starts the fire or whatever, this is one kill where Jason takes this guy's head and pushes to a wall and it like stretches out to like this metal. That was awesome, well. That like scene, that sex scene. Well, there is sex scene, but there's the scene where he's sleeping with this girl and she says that she needs to last 10 minutes because the songs would be 10 minutes. And then when the power goes out, he's like, oh yeah, like he's like, you know, coming, obviously. Also, really good sound, like audio things. Like when he's getting that guy's, like that cop's head and brushing it, the sound of that is so fucking like chilling. It sounds so fucking gross. It's good. The father, the main cop guy, he gets, he like Jason pushes him back and breaks his back or some shit and folds it. That was awesome. He like throws a dart or not dart, like a fucking arrow or something into this cop's head. Falls back on a boat thing. That was awesome. Oh, there's even this one cop crew there who has an itch to like kill people with this goddamn red laser. Like why is that included? That's just hilarious. And then that backfires with the daughter being on Tommy's side, breaking him and putting that weird cop laser guy in the fucking jail thing, whatever. And then we eventually get to the point to where, well actually before I get to that, there's a scene where Jason is hovering over this little girl. And I think in one of this trivia, actually I'm gonna look it up right now. I was like, why is he not killing kids? And I think I seen in one of these trivias that Jason feels some sort of sympathy for kids because he was a kid and he drowned. And so that's why he didn't kill that little girl who was just hiding. And he could have, you know, granted the MPB wouldn't allow them to kill a kid on camera, but I swear to God, dude, I think here it says like, that's the reason why he didn't kill us because he could feel some sort of sympathy for kids as he was one and drawn as one and didn't know what the hell he was doing. Can't fucking find it. But I, I do think it's interesting that he could have, there was a chance he could have killed this little girl, but didn't. That's interesting. They need to explain that. Or I don't know, man. Really interesting. But, you know, we get on with the final act, the final fight. Tommy, me, and I guess his girl versus Jason. He like pulls fire at the lake. Jason walks up in water, neck, and goes full in swimming. Drags Tommy for a bit. They tussle and fight. It's honestly an okay fight, but then the girl turns on the whole the boat and like cuts off Jason's neck, leading him out. Supposedly, you know, killing him. And he just his whole body is just at the bottom of the lake. They both get out. All the kids are safe. And you know, it, again, it's implied, leaving the door open for a sequel because we go back to the lake. Jason enters his eyes closed and it opens with water or whatever. So yeah, again, this was just super self-aware and super entertaining. The characters are somewhat memorable. Not the memorable is, but the kills are really good and funny. It's entertaining throughout. There's no dull moment, no boring moment. It's just a lot of fun. And that's what most of these movies should have been. Not super serious, super fun, super self-aware, and super dumb, basically. And this movie got a right director. Gosh, right, the director's name. Tom? Is it Tom? Oh, here we go. Tom McLaughlin. It's like, you know, he kind of knew, like, you know, let's just have fun with this. Why are we taking it so seriously? And bam, that's what this movie is. It's a lot of fun. You know, the sequels should have followed this story but obviously that isn't the case if something is too successful or too good just don't do it again and just milk it just like you did in the previous films basically you know from exit of i guess producers standpoint they didn't get that but whatever so overall friday the 13th part 6 jason lives 1986 is really good don't sleep on this movie it's fantastic as an actual film film i don't think it's good but as a friday 13th film and as something you could just kind of watch and have fun with it was really fucking good and don't sleep on this movie next is friday the 13th Part 7, The New Blood. 